Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. My name is John Matthews, and my family has owned a 500-acre farm just outside of town for over a century now. It's been passed down from generation to generation ever since my great-grandfather first settled on this land. Through the ups and downs, we've managed to keep the old homestead going as a working farm. That all changed the day my sister-in-law Karen married into the family five years back. Even as a young girl, Karen always had a selfish streak. She was used to getting her way and threw tantrums if she didn't. My brother Adam truly loved her, though, despite her fits of entitlement. So when they got hitched, we welcomed her into our family with open arms. Little did I know the havoc she would soon wreak. At first, Karen just made casual comments about how we ran the farm. Mind you, she'd never worked a day out in the fields in her life, yet she acted like she knew better than me or my father who'd managed the land for decades. We smiled and nodded, not paying her much mind. But before long, she got more vocal with her so-called advice. John, you should really rotate those crops more often, she'd lecture. And your irrigation system, totally inefficient. My wife Anne did her best to politely defer explaining that we'd use these methods for years with great success. But Karen wouldn't have it. The last straw was the day she barged into the barn, wrinkling her nose at the smell. This is no way to keep animals. It's filthy. Here, give me the number for your construction contractor. I'll have him modernize this place immediately. That was it. I finally told Karen that unless she wanted to get her own hands dirty, she ought to keep her mouth shut about farm matters that didn't concern her. Well, she sure showed me. I awoke one morning to the loud rumbling of heavy machinery outside. Peering out the window, I saw bulldozers plowing up soil and dump trucks unloading building materials in our south field down by the creek. And there was Karen in her shiny new hard hat, waving her arms and directing the crew. I stormed down there fuming with rage. Anne raced behind begging me to keep calm, but there was no chance of that happening. Karen, what in blazes do you think you're doing? I shouted. She smirked and leisurely sauntered over. Why, I'm building a gas station, of course. This parcel will be perfect once we clear those trees. My eyes nearly popped out of my skull. A gas station? On my family's farm? You can't do that. With a cool glare, she shoved a paper in my hands. Actually, I can. See, this contract here states I legally purchased this section of land from you last month. I looked over the document and could immediately tell it was a fake. My signature was forged sloppily, and half the details were inaccurate. This isn't legal, Karen. You forged my name. I never agreed to sell. She feigned offense. How dare you accuse me of such a thing? This is signed fair and square. Maybe you just forgot. She tried to snatch the paper away, but I held tight. Anne, call the sheriff, I bellowed. By now, a crowd of workmen had gathered, gawking uncertainly. Within fifteen minutes, Sheriff Palmer arrived and I showed him the bogus contract. He confirmed my signature was forged and the sale terms were bunk. Two deputies marched over to Karen and cuffed her hands behind her back. This is outrageous! I'll have your badge for this! She screamed. My lawyers will take you for every dime, John. You'll regret this! I simply waved as the squad car pulled away, a shark grin on my face. Anne squeezed my shoulder, equally relieved to have Karen gone. Over the next few months, I worked closely with my attorney to build an ironclad case against her. We sued for damages, trespassing, construction violations, and forgery. Karen tried every trick, stalling and countersuing, but the judge saw right through it. In the end, I won a hefty financial reward, and Karen got sentenced to three years in prison for her deceitful crimes. My fields now have returned to their pastoral splendor. Anne and I stroll through the tall grass and breathe easy enjoying our walks even more without the specter of Karen looming. Our farm is back under the family's full control, safe from the clutches of that delusional, entitled menace. As I gaze out across the rolling acres, I know my ancestors would be proud that justice has been served. With Karen behind bars now, the future looks bright and peaceful once again. The next one is a pro-revenge story. About eight or nine years ago, I worked retail in a small outdoor goods store. Six members of staff small. Ski stuff in the winter. Camping, hiking in the summer. I wasn't passionate about it, but a job's a job. The woman who hired me left pretty soon after I started. She got a job that was in the field of her degree, and she left the store in the care of the supervisor at the time, Lauren. 
Lauren was the kind of girl we have all had the poor fortune to deal with at some point. Irresponsible, held power over you when it suited her, and tried painfully hard to be your best friend the next. Annoying at best as a supervisor, but abusive with her power as a manager. She started by changing people's shifts so she was never in the store during peak hours. She'd take the easy shifts when the store was dead and would spend her time hanging out in the back office doing important paperwork, Reed sitting on her phone or reading a magazine. Then she'd start hiring her friends as and when they wanted to work. The staff ended up turning into a conveyor belt of hot topic wannabe models. A few of them were okay, but I remember one of them working a night shift, covering a close for Lauren, and closing early, emptying the till, and never being seen again. Lauren later said she'd only known him a week before hiring him. The worst thing she did, though, was abuse the three-month probation rule. Off the top of my head, they went through eight different members of staff over the course of five months. That might not sound a lot, but in a store of six employees, it wasn't a small amount. A member of staff would be hired and would be doing great, and then all of a sudden, I'm sorry we don't need your services anymore, and they were gone. It's just not working out. Vanished. I just don't think you're the right fit for this role. Disappeared. No notice period. Nothing. Just gone. I found out during one of her please like me spells that the area manager hadn't actually promoted her to be a full manager yet. He wanted to make sure she was the best option for the role. She basically thought that as long as no one else lasted long enough to shine better than her, she'd get the manager role and all perks that come with it. We then hired a woman called Kirsty, who was in her mid-late thirties and was a great person. Enthusiastic, a team player, great with customers. I mean pretty much exactly what you want in a manager. However, when it was just me and Lauren, Lauren would go off on how she doesn't like Kirsty, how she was thinking about getting rid of her unless her attitude improved, etc. And I decided to step in. I got my phone and hit record as Lauren went on another rant later on. Here's the thing Kirsty doesn't get. I'm in charge. I can fire whoever I want. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if I was taking over from that fat bell end of an area manager we have now in a year, etc., etc. I just let her talk, only responding with really. Oh yeah? That night, I sent the video to Kirsty, telling her to make sure she was on her best behavior, but she ended up taking the issue up with the area manager. He came to the store, called Lauren out, told her that in the time she'd been in charge, the store had lost somewhere in the region of $15,000, $20,000. They had to get the police involved against her friend who stole from the tills and our store, for some reason, had one of the highest turnover rates in the country. He fired her on the spot, Kirsty ended up taking over as manager, and the store finally started turning a profit. The next one is a petty revenge story. I knew exactly who it was. She was the only one who had seen where I put them. This woman was a pain, opinionated, gossipy, lazy, and just all-around drama. I'll call her Karen. I knew if I approached her, she'd deny it, get all butthurt, and make a scene, so I let it go. One morning, I took a personal call and was away from my desk for about 30 minutes. When I returned, a new package of cookies I had brought that morning had been opened and was four cookies short. She must have watched me leave and come by while I was outside. Until now, she had just taken a few out of what was already open, but she'd graduated to opening boxes. The audacity! I took a sheet of white paper and wrote in big black sharpie letters, Karen, stop stealing from me, you fat, entitled person. I've got you on video. Don't make me take it to HR or put it on the internet. Shame on you. I taped it over the food so she would see it as soon as she slid the door open. Once she saw the note, Karen would have two choices. One, admit she was caught. Two, pretend she hadn't seen it. The problem was that Karen did not like being called out, and I knew it would kill her to stay quiet and pretend like she didn't see me calling her a fat person. The next morning, I walked by Karen's desk like normal and said hello. She refused to look at me. Me. Good morning, Karen. Karen. Grunts hi. I stopped in front of her desk and made a face of fake concern. Everything okay? Karen turned her chair toward me, and I knew she had seen the note. I could see it in her eyes. She loathed me for calling her out, and she knew that unless she admitted to it, she couldn't say a damn word about it. I smiled broadly. Karen, I'm great. Insert sarcasm here. Thanks for asking. I got to my desk and opened the drawer. 
The note was still there, but my food had not been touched. She hated me after that and would badmouth me to anyone willing to listen. The thing was, she could never quite explain or give details as to why I was such an idiot as she claimed I was. I didn't care. My snacks were safe. The next one is a malicious compliance story. This happened a couple of years ago in December 2019. I got a job at a higher-end grocery store in the area as I was planning on saving for when I started college in the fall of 2020. The store has all kinds of different departments like a market cafe, pizza sub shop, cheese, etc. I aced my interview and was hired in the bakery department specifically for breads only. That'll be important later. The first four months were a breeze, but after COVID-19 ramped up, my doctor put me on leave until August. When I returned, a lot of people had quit in the bakery. I was taking college classes now, so I was working night shift part-time from 5, 9 p.m. My department manager, Hannah, informed me that they were short-staffed on nights, and I might be on my own one day a week. I was sure I would be getting help for the rest of the nights. Nope. Weeks went by, and I barely got help. I was burning myself out doing the closing shift on my own along with my schoolwork. No one was in the dessert or breakfast section, and I couldn't talk to anyone about it because they were gone by the time I clocked in. I complained to the bread manager, Jim, and he told me to talk to Hannah since she runs the whole department. Sure, fine. This is how the conversation went with Hannah. OP. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about the workload. A lot of day shift people leave their mess and can't clean up after themselves. I have to do that and my duties, which isn't fair. Are you hiring anybody for nights? I can't keep running around and using my inhaler so much, too. Hannah. Oh yeah, we're having a hard time filling the night shift roles we could always train you for desserts and breakfast. OP. That's not what I meant. I meant assistance, not more responsibility. I can't do everything in the bakery and close with only four hours. Hannah. Well, you can figure something out. Just make sure you don't leave a mess during closing, though. You can't leave until everything is done. I can't leave until everything is done? Okay. Ever since she said that, I started documenting every time I had to do three jobs at once. I would take my sweet time when I didn't have class the next day, making sure I clocked out at 11 p.m. each time. The amount of stuff that kept piling was ridiculous, but I was simply following her instructions. HR noticed my clock in and out times and wanted me to come by their office. I told them everything, including what Hannah said to me, along with the photos I took. Suddenly, everything changed. At nine o'clock sharp, they were kicking me out, and whatever was left was for the morning. Ha. Huh. Hannah was reprimanded but wasn't fired until she was caught selling two-year-old expired pumpkin pies to customers during Thanksgiving. That day sure was a doozy. I was shocked when I saw all those empty boxes she already sold. The next one is an entitled parent story. So before 2018, my father-in-law met this weird girl who was one of those whack jobs who thought that she owed the universe and shouldn't have to apologize for her behavior. When first meeting her, she would do this strange thing, claiming she was socially inept and couldn't handle talking to strangers. She even went as far in the following years as to throw herself in harm's way, to avoid talking to people, and would claim they were in the wrong for being there, unannounced or uninvited. Both of these were lies every time. Despite not caring for her strange antics, my husband John, not his real name, would often let the abnormal behaviors go and tell his father that since he seemed genuinely happy for the first time since his mother passed away, he was cool with whatever decision he made, not to mention that father-in-law was a grown man who didn't need his son's permission and was only looking for his input. Father-in-law is very caring and Mormon, so he is very religious. We didn't find out until much later that she forced her way into his life to marry into the family because she was crazy. Fast forward to 2018. My husband and I are getting married. Aside from a few things that irked us, the hole she was digging for herself kept growing, constantly ridiculing us for something she disagreed with. Monster would on more than one occasion try to erase my mother-in-law by telling my father-in-law she would destroy or get rid of all his electronics forcing my father-in-law to clean up after a dog he never wanted, nor had the time to take care of, working 12-plus-hour shifts. At the same time, she remained jobless. The list was growing, and the enormous pile of crap was how manipulative she had gotten. Father-in-law was constantly asking Monster if he could visit his mother. You heard me right. He was 20 years her senior, at least. 
and she had a problem with him seeing his sister and mother literally across the street because they will convince you to divorce me. The straw that broke the camel's back was my eldest daughter. During the wedding, Monster faked illnesses and lied to everyone attending that she was paying for and doing everything for the wedding and that she should have the most pity because of everything she was going through. FYI, my mother was the one who shelled out nearly 30k for our wedding, and that was comparatively small. We tried hard to work with Monster on the one event she offered to host to make it relatively cheap on her and father-in-law because she was unable to make a lot of money. We learned that because of her constantly getting in debt with loan sharks for scams she used to pull, we aren't money hungry, and I was happier just enjoying a nice BBQ with the family rather than going to a restaurant. She worked out. During this time, she continually disregarded what we wanted for our wedding. She practically tried to force us to have a wedding in Vegas and get hitched, something I told her and my family I was not comfortable with because of personal issues I was dealing with at the time. Then she had the gall to try and guilt trip us into spending our baby-making honeymoon in Florida with her family, something that we were extremely uncomfortable with, considering we had never met them before. And from what she had said to us prior, they wouldn't like us because of our political views anyway. I had to tell her no, not exaggerating, 17 times, that we already paid for a spot for our honeymoon, where we could enjoy ourselves alone. She offered her medicinal weed to minors at the party, rolled down a hill of grass in the wedding dress my father-in-law paid for, and then crawled around on the ground during the reception to throw cake at a child. We still, for some ungodly reason, tried to reason with Monster for the sake of my father-in-law. But John had had enough of her. Come time after the honeymoon, we find out that I am pregnant. We tell everyone everyone is happy, and then more drama ensues. Monster kept trying to push her views on other people, saying that we were wrong to have a gender reveal party and call our baby anything because the baby hasn't decided what gender it wants to be yet. We decided to name our daughter after my mother-in-law because it was my husband's wish, and I was more than happy to comply because my mother-in-law, to this day, is a saint, and we miss her terribly. R.I.P. Mama, so we decided to have a baby shower that aligned perfectly with mother-in-law's birthday. It was our way of celebrating old life with new life. I wanted there to be boys and girls allowed to showcase how much her family loved her. However, Monster and father-in-law planned to be out of town, never wound up going, and asked if we could do a small get-together instead. I agreed to keep the peace, but she instead went behind my back, planned out an entirely second baby shower, did not invite a single person from my side of the family, and refused to have any boys there. She even went as far as to idiot at me because my mother refused to come, and there were a few boys that I invited that she was uncomfortable with coming. Things got worse when closer to delivery. She was offended that I did not want her in the delivery room because I had preeclampsia, and she was used to making my blood boil and spike high with her antics. I politely told her the only ones allowed in the room were my husband and mother, and she claimed she would impersonate a doctor and sneak into my room. Thankfully, that was shut down quickly as if I wasn't already dealing with a ton. Next, she caused drama in the waiting room the entire time I was in labor, claiming, Why did we even come if it was going to take so long? I have better things I could be doing. Then after the fact, she made a disgusting comment that made John angry. I don't know how it happened, but some of my DNA got into this baby somehow. She was not blood-related to any of us. And it upset my husband that, like with many other things, she kept making everything about her and not about our baby. Needless to say, after all the hell Monster had put us through, her constantly lying about her medical history made us wary of her actions. Their house was always covered in dog poop and piss because she refused to clean it. I will vomit at the smell of it, and said she was prone to fainting spells, and could die any day without warning. John and I were not okay with this woman ever being left alone at home with our baby. She even commented about giving my baby things to keep her calm on more than one occasion, and how she felt uncomfortable letting any boys near my baby because I don't know what triggers boys to become pedophiles, including John and father-in-law. Yeah, a real piece of work. So finally, after one too many incidents, we tell her off and inform Monster and father-in-law of the ground rules we have set. She flips out and calls us the a-holes for keeping her grandbaby away from her, even though she was the one who cut contact. My exact words to her were, 
If you still want to make contact with your grandbaby, we don't mind meeting in an open public space of your choosing where she won't be affected by whatever is giving her hives in your house. And her reply was, No, I can't bond with something being dangled above my head like a carrot on a stick. John saw red. He wanted to cut Monster and Father-in-Law out of our lives for good. I managed to calm him down enough to try and keep Father-in-Law in the loop, considering she was very clearly manipulating him to this point. There is so much to it, but basically, after many threats to our lives, where she said, You have no idea what I am capable of. I will do whatever it takes to get my way. And at one point, threatening to hurt my husband if he didn't comply with her views, we blocked her on all forms of media. Her response was to use her secondary account to message him and say, Blocking me? Oh, so mature. And we blocked her again. We even threatened legal action because she constantly texted us through father-in-law's phone. It was easy to know who was talking based on vocabulary. And in the end, it was hilarious when she and father-in-law tried to press the grandparents' rights on us. All I had to say to that was, Let's see what the courts think about your wife illegally growing marijuana in the basement, leaving disgusting dog feces all over the house for 12-plus hours until you get home, an aggressive dog that will eat the back of your skull, her constant abusive and neglectful behavior, and her constant medical problems which include fainting and death at a moment's notice, and see if she is still capable of suing for grandparents' rights in that home. Newsflash, she doesn't have a case. We are a loving family that has tried everything to include and deal with her childish and obnoxious behavior. But she has shut us out. Now we are done. Since around 2020 to 2021, we have been rid of her, and officially she's gone. So party. And to anyone with a similar problem with these monsters, do not be afraid to say no. Record their neglectful behavior and seek professional help against them. You are not wrong for wanting to protect yourself. Love you guys, and I hope you have a great time reading. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.